Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have The Mystery House. This is a pretty recent weird discovery that was made in November of last year by the China National Space Administration rover U-22. This rover travels around the far side of the moon exploring and giving us insights into what lies beyond our point of view. This rover has been traveling through the 186 kilometer wide Von Karman crater and this is when the rover ended up spotting what appeared to be a sort of cube shape unidentified object which is now being referred to as a mystery house. The rover is now on its way to investigate further, but we don't yet quite have the answers to this mystery. When the mystery house was first spotted, it wasn't exactly far from the rover, as it was only 80 meters away, but that does not mean the rover can get there quickly. The approach for this rover is expected to take somewhere from two to three lunar days, which is about two to three months in Earth time. This is because the rover moves quite slowly and the path to explore this cube object is not a clear one. While we patiently wait for the answers, we can always speculate. Drop a comment down below with your best guesses, and who knows, maybe we'll come up with the next viral conspiracy theory. Number nine, Alien Bones. Captured on August 14th, 2014 by the Curiosity rover, this photo appears to show something on the surface of Mars that could chill you to the bone, a femur on the surface of the red planet. Many conspiracy theorists and alien enthusiasts alike hopped onto this to show it as proof that there was once life on Mars, or even that humans had been there before on some sort of secret mission that went awry. NASA has gone on the record to say that it's not a thigh bone, but just a rock that happened to be shaped that way after erosion from wind or water, which we have proven existed at one point. But come on, if it really was a bone, do you think that they'd tell us? Though I'm inclined to go with the scientists on this one, it would be kind of cool if we had proof of aliens on Mars. If you think there are aliens out there, hit the like and subscribe buttons to help us bring you the most amazing videos on them. In our number eight spot today, we have orange colored moon. Okay. I'm gonna be honest with you. This wasn't exactly found on the far side of the moon. I know, I know, I get it, you're upset, but I just truly thought it was so cool. I really wanted to share it with you guys, so bear with me. All the way back in 1972, Apollo 17 astronaut and geologist Harrison Schmidt was exploring around the Taurus Littrow landing site when he stumbled upon some orange colored soil. It was a completely unexpected find and one that they weren't quite sure about. What was causing this soil to get its orange color, and why was it different from all the other soil around it? Luckily, especially since it's been so long, they've been able to look more into it, and there are actually some answers to this moon mystery. After more research, lunar geologists were able to conclude that the orange soil happened as a result of an explosive volcanic eruption that occurred over 3.64 billion years ago. That's so cool! This orange soil exists because of molten drops spraying out from an awesome lunar volcanic eruption billions of years ago. Space never fails to absolutely amaze me. I'm starting to think that geologists have the coolest job in the world, by the way. In our number seven spot today, we have the Tsiolkovsky Crater. This is obviously a crater, and it has been named after the Russian scientist Konstantin Tsiolkovsky. It was originally discovered on photographs that were sent back to Earth from the Russian spacecraft Luna 3. This crater is a large impact crater that lies in the Southern Hemisphere, but you might be sitting there thinking, there's a lot of craters on the moon, so what makes this one so special? Well, this crater is actually one of the most important figures found on the far side of the moon because it has a complex central peak and a smooth lava flooded floor on top of a few other interesting geographical features that make it a very exciting and important place for future lunar exploration. In our number six spot today, we have reflections. Like I mentioned before, for a long time, it was widely believed that the far side of the moon was referred to as the dark side of the moon because it didn't receive any sunlight rather than the truth, which is that the name is only to suggest that it's the side we know little about because we can't see it. That is why this discovery was a bit of a shock to some people. Not only is the far side of the moon not dark and does receive sunlight, but the far side of the moon actually reflects more light than our near side. This is because the side that we see has these incredibly dark, smooth, low-lying planes that are from ancient seas of molten magma that were on the moon, and while this is incredibly fascinating, it doesn't really reflect light very well. And while the far side reflects light better, 
it's still not that great. The moon is significantly darker than it appears to us, with most of the surface being a color closer to that of asphalt. In our number five spot today, we have the Sea of Moscow. This is a lunar Mar that is one of the very few that sit on the far side of the moon, which is exactly what makes it so fascinating, as well as the fact that we aren't exactly sure of its origins. Just so we're all on the same page, Lunar Mar is the large, dark, basaltic plains that are located on the moon. The basaltic plains are of course made up of basalt, which is a result of the rapid cooling of low viscosity lava that is rich in magnesium and iron that is at the surface or very near to the surface, and this appears both on the earth and on the moon. For a while it was believed that this was formed due to some ancient volcanic eruption, but there is also speculation that it may have been from a meteorite cluster impact instead. Either way, whichever is responsible for this lunar mar, the moon sure was having a very stressful time. In our number four spot today, we have the crust. Remember how people used to believe that there was a face on the moon? Well, that was thanks to that lunar mar we just talked about. So while the Sea of Moscow and things sort of similar do exist on the far side of the moon, there really isn't a lot of Maria on the side that we can't see. What was called the Lunar Far Side Highlands problem became a thing of human interest in 1959 when that Soviet Luna 3 was able to send the first images of the dark side of the moon all the way back to Earth. On the side of the moon we can see, the near side, we see a lot of variation in coloring and that is due to this Maria. This knowledge is what led to scientists being shocked when they first saw the other side the far side, because the far side doesn't look the same as the near side at all. While a lot of the near side is Maria, the far side is mostly mountains and craters, and this led to the question and mystery of why. For 55 years this question plagued researchers, but now we think we may have an answer. Scientists realized that this difference and the reason for the lack of Maria might just be due to the difference in the crustal thickness of the side of the moon we can see and the far side, and this is just the consequence of how the moon originally formed. The most widely accepted answer of how the moon formed is the idea of some sort of Mars-sized object slamming into Earth shortly after the planet came into existence, and this gigantic impact flung a bunch of stuff out into space and this would eventually form our moon. That's like the very basis of the theory. So after this impact, the moon and Earth were both super hot, like so hot that parts of them vaporized which created a disk of rock, magma, and vapor found around the Earth. Then, since the moon is smaller, it cooled faster, but the moon used to be like 20 times closer to us than it is now, so the far side of the moon cooled faster than the near side, and this created a difference in temperature between the two halves, which then led to impact the crustal formation on the moon. That was a lot of info, but how crazy is that? I always find it so interesting to learn about how each and every step in the formation of our solar system has affected the way things are in ways we don't even really fully realize. In our number three spot today, we have craters. Okay, so now we know about why one side has more Maria, but now why does the far side have more craters than the near side? For a while, people thought this was because the Earth was acting as a sort of shield for the moon, but we now know that that is not true. The Earth only obscures about four square degrees out of 41,000 square degrees of the sky that can be seen from the moon, so obviously this means that the Earth is actually a terrible shield for the moon. This is what led researchers to believe that lava flows are more likely responsible, and this definitely goes back to the crust as well and the origins of the moon that we just discussed. The crust of the moon mostly consists of plagioclases, which were formed when aluminum and calcium condense and combined with silicates in the mantle of the moon. Like we talked about earlier, since the far side was, well, further from the super hot, slower cooling earth side after that big impact, these elements cooled sooner and the crust that formed was thicker. So when meteor impacts happened on the near side of the moon, there was a more likely chance of them cracking into the thinner crust, which then releases the basaltic lava. But on the far side of the moon, the thicker crust puts up much more of a fight and now the moon is just left with these cool battle scars. In our number two spot today we have the South Pole Aitken Basin. Speaking of craters on the far side of the moon, this one is an immense impact one. Measured to be roughly 2,500 kilometers in diameter and between 5.2 to 8.2 kilometers deep, this is one of the largest known impact craters in our entire solar system. That is no easy feat and definitely means that the moon has seen its fair share of cosmic disturbances. 
This basin is not only the largest and deepest on the moon, but it is also the oldest. While this is located on the far side of the moon, apparently just the outer rim of the basin can be seen from Earth, and this is due to the huge mountain chain that is called the Leibniz Mountains. Remember those missions launched by the CNSA that we started this list off with? Well, one of their spacecrafts actually landed in this basin in 2019 and began to explore all around it, which means that all it has to offer is soon to be uncovered. In our number one spot today, we have the Eastern Sea. This is a lunar Mar that is located on the western border of the near side and far side of the moon and is partially visible, but pretty difficult to see from Earth. What is so cool about this one is the way it shows up on lunar images, kind of like a target ring bullseye. It is believed that this is an impact crater that was caused by an asteroid-sized object. Estimated to be around 64 kilometers in diameter, traveling at speeds of around a calm, casual 15 kilometers per second. This collision is said to have caused ripples in the lunar crust, which is what gives it that ring effect. At the moment, we don't have samples directly from this area, so we aren't sure what the exact age is yet, but it is thought to be the moon's most recent or youngest impact basin, thought to be quite a bit younger than the Imbrium Basin, which is about 3.85 billion years old. Number 10, Contractor. A former NASA contractor went on video to reveal the fact that NASA has been keeping secrets from us. She says she both viewed and heard evidence that three NASA astronauts said that they had seen unidentified flying objects land on the moon, but that these events were later covered up in an operation that was codenamed Santa Claus, a fitting name as NASA wants you to believe that UFOs are just about as real as Santa. She says that she had clearance to enter Building 8 at NASA's Johnson Space Center back in the 1970s. She says that she received information over lunch from officials that if anyone was ever caught exposing aliens as real, they would lose their pensions, and apparently one person in the past had not only lost their pension, but had disappeared off the face of the earth. In the video, she said, They didn't threaten to kill me, but I got the message I shouldn't talk about it. She apparently witnessed everything from employees being forced to burn photographic evidence and seeing official pictures being airbrushed to hide UFOs. Number 9. Oumuamua On October 19th, 2017, an object was sighted from the University of Hawaii. Classified as a comet, the object is thin and flat, or roughly a quarter of a mile long. But more importantly, it was picking up speed. If you don't remember middle school science, an object in motion remains in motion unless acted upon by an object of similar or equal mass. In space, because there is nothing to act upon the object to slow it down, any velocity will be kept until impact. But an increase in velocity doesn't make sense without propellant. So what was moving Oumuamua? Well, the theory goes that it might contain a chunk of solid hydrogen, which was slowly falling off of the object's surface and allowing for an increase in speed. However, studying the comet is completely impossible, as it's the first observed object to fly into our system and then fly back out. So this theory is just kind of unconfirmed, and we may never know where the Traveler came from, nor where it did go. Number 8. Astronaut Like I said in the first point, there is allegedly a conspiracy within NASA to cover up any of their employees or former employees talking about the fact that they have had alien experiences. But as I have mentioned in other parts of this list, there are actually a handful of astronauts who have spoken out about potentially alien encounters. Leland Melvin is probably best known for taking his astronaut photos with his rescued dogs, but what you're probably not familiar with is the fact that he has shared his alien experiences on Twitter. He received a question on Twitter that read, What's your outlook about the existence of intelligent alien life living in our solar system? Have you ever witnessed a UFO? And Leland went on to respond with, I have not seen one in space or on the ground, but thought I saw something organic slash alien-like floating out of the payload bay. Randy Bresnik and I called the ground to ask what it could be, and they said it was ice that had broken off of the Freon hoses. Translucent, curved, organic looking, with an alien emoji at the end. Of course, he explains it by saying it was just ice, but that was probably just NASA feeding them an easy cover-up. Number 7. Moon Crash The Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter is similar to the Mars Orbiter that I have talked about before. It basically watches over the moon and takes pictures of its surface. Earlier this year, they released a photo that had many people scratching their heads and insisting that NASA 
was doing yet another cover up. The photo shows the surface of the moon with what is called a double impact crater. While the moon is covered in tons of craters, this one is unique for this reason. The evidence of the dozens of feet wide indentation seems to show that some sort of man made spaceship crashed into the moon and left the divot. Many people on social media believe this to be evidence that some sort of alien craft had hit the moon, but NASA tried to shut everyone up by claiming it was just an out of control rocket. While they seem to know it was a rocket, they admitted that they don't have any idea where it came from or what its original path was intended to be. So even if it's not aliens, it's still pretty confusing. Number 6. Alien Photo Mars is one of the main planets that many people believe could be host to aliens. Hence the term Martians and all the fictitious media that includes alien creatures visiting from Mars. On February 4th of this year, one person online dug up a photo that the Perseverance rover had taken on Mars back in 2021. The title of the blog post being, Alien Figure Watching Mars Rover, 100% Proof of Life UFO Sighting News. The image seems to show a dark figure laying on a large Martian rock. It's distinctly human shaped and darkly colored and stands out from anything else in the area or what we've seen in previous pictures. The man explains in his blog post everything that he believes it to be. There is a person laying down watching the NASA Mars rover from a safe distance away. The person is about 1 foot tall, 0.3 meters, and is lying down. Pinkish upper chest, neck and face, reddish hair, wearing a dark suit, but has a gray object over one shoulder. Looks like a backpack of some sort. There are even footprints behind the person leading up to the location they chose to lay down at. If you don't agree with that, then what do you think it could be? Number 5. Mercury UFO Project Mercury was NASA's first ambitious space mission which took place back in the early 1960s, which included six manned space flights. But that isn't what we're going to be focusing on. One of the Mercury probes sent out into space took a picture of what appears to clearly be a UFO. A photo that a NASA blogger found in an old disc from the mission that took place in December 1960 appears to show a strange shape that looks like it could be an alien spacecraft. While many arguments against UFOs are that they're just random space junk, this was at the beginning of NASA's steps out into space, so there really couldn't have been that many rocket pieces and broken panels floating around. The blogger says that he believes this is aliens wanting to watch one of humanity's biggest steps, not worrying about being seen because this particular craft didn't actually have any humans on it. Number 4. Deleted UFO This same blogger also recently found evidence of NASA purposefully covering up and deleting archival photos that appear to show evidence of aliens. He found a photo of what appears to be a large, dark, rectangular alien ship flying past the sun, and he also found that NASA is trying to hide it. On his blog, he said, I found a huge rectangle UFO shooting past our sun, and it's got to be several miles across or more. I tried to find it on another NASA site, but I got an error message. Then I tried using official European Space Administration software, and again, error message. Then I went into the individual photos online and input my own URL, but these photo times do not exist. That's three different sources all erased from existence. I found it at a fourth source. He says that he won't reveal this other source as he doesn't want it taken down as well. There are 20 different photos in a row that all show the unidentified craft and he calls NASA out for never saying anything about it. Number 3. Mars Photos I talked about this on a separate list, but I also wanted to touch on it here too. We've taken a look at one Mars rover photo already, but I want to dive into just how many of these there are. People are constantly picking out unexplained and potentially alien things popping up in these photos of the red planet. One of the most baffling recent images is this one that appears to show some sort of carved out entryway which people believe must lead to some sort of alien hideout on the planet, looking too precise to have been caused by natural weather and environment conditions like NASA claims. There have also been many rocks that appear to be much more than just rocks as they stand out from anything else in the photos, almost looking like a sort of coral growing out from the ground through the dust. There are a lot of them and NASA has attempted to explain away all these photos, but there is still just a lot of mystery there. Number 2. The Calvine Photo This one is similar to the Kecksburg file in the way that it is also a UFO encounter from many decades ago that NASA tried to hide away by claiming it was lost. The photo was taken in 
August 1990 by two hikers near Calvine in Scotland. It shows what is clearly a large diamond shaped vessel flying through the sky, being trailed by another airplane. They took pictures and said it appeared to be about 30 meters long. It apparently then shot straight up into the sky and disappeared, never to be seen again. The photo was first given to the newspaper and then handed over to the Ministry of Defense, and then it was never discussed again and the photo apparently went missing. In October of 2021, the Scottish Operations Records book was checked and there was no account of anything having been spotted in the sky on that day. One determined individual, however, managed to track down the lost photo and about it they said, The Calvine photograph stands as one of the biggest mysteries in UFO history. Finally revealed after 32 years, it shows that answers only bring new questions. Number 1. Space Nudes In May of this year, it was revealed to the public that NASA was going to be sending a message out to aliens, calling it the Beacon in the Galaxy. It's a binary coded message that includes details about our planet and human life that is going to be shot into space for anybody to find. One of these images was revealed to be an image of what a genetically male and female human look like, and yes, it has all the details. It also includes a diagram of gravity so aliens know which part of us is the top and which is the bottom. Other images included are the solar system diagram, a map of Earth's land mass, and depictions of things like mountains and trees. So yes, NASA is actually sending our nudes out to space. The fact that they are doing this shows that at least a small part of the organization believes that aliens are out there to receive this message. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have the wandering black hole. If you keep up with space news, you'll know that lately, and rightfully so, it's been flooded with news of the James Webb Telescope as it unfurls and reaches its destination at L2. But while this is exciting and very promising, we have to take some time to remember our roots. The James Webb was preceded by the infamous Hubble Space Telescope. The Hubble walked so James Webb could run. Since its launch into low Earth orbit in the 1990s, this space telescope has been delivering us amazing space discoveries, and this one is a bit of a frightening one. Back in 2017, the Hubble located a black hole, which is already frightening, but this one was peculiar. That is because they found that this one was basically being pulled or manipulated by gravitational waves. Basically what this means is that at some point this black hole is going to escape its own galaxy and begin roaming into the universe. Black holes are bad enough, I don't want them to start wandering around. The good news, however, is that despite this black hole weighing approximately the same as 1 billion suns, as it flies through space at 5 million miles per hour, it's estimated to be about 8 billion light years away from Earth, so we're pretty safe at this point. In our number 9 spot today, we have the Trementina Base. This is a location that was, of course, discovered using satellite imaging, and you might be wondering what this base holds that makes it so unsettling. Well, that is because this is the location that belongs to the Scientology-affiliated Church of Spiritual Technology. If you are unfamiliar, Scientology is a set of beliefs and practices that were invented by L. Ron Hubbard, and it has been variously defined as a cult. The core belief of this group is that humans are immortal and that our bodies are a essentially just a shell to house us. There's also some alien stuff in there I'm not quite so sure about. This group is quite controversial, not only for the beliefs of the group, but because of their illegal activities that also occur like fraud or spying on the government. There have been numerous superior court judgments which have not only called this group a dangerous cult, but also a manipulative profit making business as well. So this base is said to belong to the Church of Spiritual Technology and they are said to be an entity that was formed to to manage the copyright affairs of the Church of Scientology. This base is supposed to provide storage space for an archiving project, which is meant to preserve founder L. Ron Hubbard's writings, films, and recordings for future generations, which is definitely a terrifying thought. It is said that these texts have been engraved on stainless steel tablets that are encased in titanium capsules and held underground. Maybe a little overzealous if you ask me. In our number 8 spot today, we have Stereo A. The soul Solar Terrestrial Relations Observatory, or STEREO for short, is a solar observation mission that was first launched in 2006. The mission saw the launch of two spacecrafts, STEREO A and B, and they were sent into orbit around the Sun. This has caused the spacecraft to pull ahead of and fall behind the Earth, which has given them the opportunity to use their stereoscopic capabilities to get imaging of the Sun, as well as phenomena such as coronal mass ejection, which is exactly what we are here to talk about today. 
today. In July of 2012, there was a CME, often referred to as a sort of solar superstorm, that tore through Earth's orbit, but luckily, Earth wasn't there. The same couldn't be said, however, for the Stereo A spacecraft as this storm and the craft collided. If this event had occurred just one week prior to when it did, Earth would have been right in the midst of it, however, so we were pretty narrowly missed. The Stereo A spacecraft has been able to remain operational despite this hot encounter. In our number seven spot today, we have the Lost City. In 2011, archeologist Sarah Parkak used high resolution and NASA satellites in order to look for subtle differences on the surface of the Earth, and she used this in order to pinpoint the locations of buried ancient pyramids, towns, and ancient tombs in Egypt. This would allow her and her team to find these spots from thousands of miles away so that they could then go and excavate them. While this method led to many amazing discoveries, perhaps the most notable of all is the discovery of a 3,000-year-old Egyptian city. She and her team had found the lost ancient city of Tanis, which lies about two hours northeast of Cairo. Through this satellite imaging, she was able to find networks of streets and such that are completely invisible from the ground. The imaging also shows that the city is filled with underground tombs as well. Sir explains why she enjoys what she does so much, saying, quote, What's incredible about archaeology is literally every day archaeologists are making headlines by making the most incredible discoveries. Well, Sarah, this is certainly one of them. In our number six spot today, we have whales. There are quite a few satellites that orbit our Earth, and there has been for years, but as time goes on, we find new ways to use the information that they give us. According to an article written on January 20th of this year, there is a new study that is showing how, as satellite imagery improves, it is being used to accurately identify whales that have been stranded on beaches. The article goes on to explain why this is important, saying, quote, For as long as humans have been monitoring the ocean, the only way we've known about stranded whales was to stumble upon them ourselves. But knowing about stranded whales, including where and when they strand and how many are ashore, is vitally important. Largely due to human causes, such as ship strikes, pollution, and entanglement in fishing gear, whale strandings are on the rise. Their occurrence can often signal that something is amiss and hint at a larger ecosystem problem, such as a harmful algal bloom, yet the ground-based networks used to monitor stranded whales are biased towards wealthy, highly populated regions. It is very true that despite their enormous size, many of these creatures that wash up on remote coastlines or in resource-limited nations or in countries experiencing conflict end up going completely unnoticed. In our number five spot today, we have the SS Yasim wreck. The SS Yasim was a Bolivian cargo ship that sank on the evening of December 1st, 2003. For a while, no one was quite sure as to why it sank, as well as the fact that no one could find the wreck. This is exactly why it was so surprising when, a few years ago, the Google Maps team located the sunken vessel based on their satellite imaging. The ship was found on its side, perhaps in the same location it initially sank, in Wingate Reef, just off of the coast of Sudan. This wreck then became one of the largest visible on Google Earth until quite recently. In our number four spot today, we have the Lake of Blood. This is another find that came as someone was scrolling along and looking at all there is to see on Google Maps all the way back in 2007. This is when they noticed a blood red lake that sat just outside of Sadr City in Iraq. Many people began to speculate what this could be about, including a ton of macabre ideas. There was even a rumor going around that said a local slaughterhouse in the area would sometimes Sometimes dump their blood into canals, but this seems a little unnecessary and very unlikely. There hasn't yet been an official explanation for what exactly made the water so red, but it's most likely that the red color is due to sewage, pollution, or possibly some sort of water treatment process. I can understand why the startling image would get people's imaginations going, but it is likely a pretty reasonable explanation. In our number three spot today, we have the Gobi Desert structure. This is one discovery that had conspiracy theorists minds absolutely swirling. About a decade ago, someone was searching through some Google Maps images when they found a mysterious array of structures and patterns that appeared to be etched into the surface of the Gobi Desert, which is located in China. The structures are reminiscent of geoglyphs, but are seemingly much more modern and newly created. The speculations of what this structure could be or why it was created went wild, with people saying that they were street maps of American cities or messages either to or from some 
sort of extraterrestrials, the list of bizarre theories just goes on. While this is still sort of conspiracy sounding, this is likely the most reasonable explanation for what these structures are, and that is that these structures are used to help calibrate China's spy and radar satellites. To be fair, this does make a lot of sense, and I don't have any other ideas for what it could possibly be. In our number two spot today, we have Leo One. So we live on Earth, which is one of the planets in our solar system, and our solar system sits in a galaxy that we call the Milky Way. There are other galaxies out there that are potentially similar to ours, but there are also things called satellite galaxies. So you know how our solar system is a solar system because we are bound to and orbiting around our sun? Well, basically these satellite galaxies are like that, but with bigger galaxies. Like they orbit around our galaxy. It's a whole thing about gravity and all of that sciencey stuff, but in the end, here in the Milky Way, we have about 50 satellite galaxies that orbit us, and the particular one I want to talk about right now is called LEO-1. We started investigating this specific one because of the fact that researchers realized that it doesn't contain a lot of dark matter. While studying this galaxy, it was found that although it is small, it has a massive black hole at the center of it. Like, it's so big in comparison to the galaxy itself that this black hole is almost as big as the one we have here in the Milky Way, which is unprecedented data. This discovery could lead scientists to redefining what their understanding is of how all galaxies formed. The galaxies are the building blocks of the universe, so this would be immensely interesting and important information, and it could change a lot of what we once believed. In our number one spot today, we have the missing hiker. This one is a little different from the others on today's list, but it's a super interesting story that involves using satellites, and I had to share it with you. A man by the name of Ben Kuo has a hobby where he enjoys looking at different satellite imagery in order to look at all places all over the world. He has said, quote, you can look and see what's going on in the world no matter where it is. It's kind of fascinating what you can see. He then went on to describe how it's kind of trivial, but he loves it, and in this case, it was more useful than trivial. The case he is referring to took place in April of 2021, when a hiker named Rene Compion got lost in the Angeles National Forest. While lost with little reception and low battery on his phone, Rene was able to send one photo to his roommate, which he sent in hopes to give a clue about his location. The photo showed his legs with a sort of canyon below, and while I look at the photo and go, okay, he's somewhere that has rocks, I guess, people like Ben see this as a stellar clue. Ben said, quote, actually, I looked at the picture and I said, I bet I can find where this guy is. Ben used his own knowledge of hiking trails in the area as well as sites like Google Earth and EO Browser in order to zero in on where the missing hiker could be. It took Ben about 20 to 30 minutes to find what he thought was the location of the missing person and he passed along the info to the search and rescue team. In the end, when the sheriff's department went out to investigate, they found the missing man less than a mile from where Ben suggested he might be. Once found and informed of how they located him, Renee said, quote, I was like, wow, I didn't realize somebody had a hobby doing stuff like that. I owe him my life and everybody else that was involved in helping. Number 10, Zombie Star. While the idea of a human coming back to life and hunting for brains is spooky, to me the knowledge that dead stars can do the same, even the eating each other part, is both scary and exciting. This is Tycho, a former white dwarf, which is a star that has quote, died and gone supernova, exploding into a fantastic show of cosmic energy and matter with the power and brightness of a billion suns. And usually a white dwarf will stay dead, but not in a binary system where there's more than one star at the center. Sometimes these previously deceased stars can come back to life. They do this by feeding off the energy and material from their neighboring star and powering themselves back up, not unlike a zombie eating somebody's brains. Scientists believe that this may have to do with what they call dark energy as well, which theoretically makes up about three quarters of our universe. But since we have yet to truly detect or understand it, these zombie stars will remain a mystery but they look super cool, right? In our number nine spot today, we have the green gel. Another discovery that was made by the U-22 rover, which first made its lunar landing in February of 2019, came in August of that year. On Lunar Day 8, which began on July 25th, the rover was doing its thing, finding its way through an area that was filled with a bunch of small impact craters. On July 28th, as the team here on Earth was preparing to power down the rover for its little midday nap, which is meant to protect the machine from high temperatures and radiation from the sun, which, if you take away all that scary space stuff, sounds like the cutest little thing ever, a little rover nap. But 
Anyway, as this thing's getting ready for its little rover nap, one member on the team was checking over some images that were taken by the rover's main camera, and that's when they spotted a small crater that seemed like it contained some sort of material that had a color and a sort of luster that was significantly different from the lunar area surrounding it. The team then changed the plans they had for the rover and decided that instead of going west, which was next on the schedule, they instead would take a little detour to go and check out this mystery material. The rover carefully made its way over to the crater and examined it with both its visible and near-infrared spectrometer, which is a thing that detects lights that are scattered or reflected off of material, which helps to reveal what they're made up of. For a while, no one knew exactly what the substance was, and it was only being described as being gel-like and being a weird color. But after almost a year of more research, it was finally identified. It's rock! More specifically, rock that was melted together, most likely in the heat of impact from a meteorite. It's insane that something like that created a dark green glistening impact melt, but it's also very cool. I'm just glad we got down to the bottom of this mystery. Number eight, Eye of Sauron. The Rings of Power just finished its first season as I'm recording this video, and since I still have Tolkien on the brain, this photo of the Fomalhaut system made the cut. A relatively young system at 440 million years old, for comparison, our sun is about 4.5 billion years old. Fomalhaut and its surrounding disk of space dust have been the subject of a lot of controversy in the astronomical community. The images captured interest scientists not only because they look like they came straight from Mordor, but because of the zombie planet that has been tricky to find. The photos taken show that the dust ring is not centered around the star, but is shifted and elongated into the eye shape, which indicates something of large mass on the outer parts of the system, which scientists believed could be a Saturn-sized planet. Investigations have been conflicting over the past few years, with researchers believing on and off that the planet exists, and with Hubble images being inconclusive, which is why we call it a zombie planet, because it keeps coming back to life in a way amongst researchers. The system may have gotten its strange ring shape from all of the comet activity as well, with over 2,000 comet impacts daily, many of those comets being over one kilometer wide. That would definitely kick up a lot of dust, so one does not simply walk into Fulmahut. Number seven, Sunken. Okay, I threw this one in because it's currently spooky season while I record this, and having a jack-o'-lantern sun on the list couldn't be passed up. In 2014, the Solar Dynamics Observatory captured this creepy photo of the sun smiling right at us, like its features had been carved right out of a pumpkin. Solar flares and activity on the sun can be quite unpredictable, and the fact that it lined up to look like this is pretty cool. I just hope that there isn't some giant alien up there carving into our sun to decorate their intergalactic porch. But if that's the case, what are we going to dress up Earth as? If Earth had a Halloween costume, what would it be? Let me know in the comments. Number six, greater pumpkin galaxies. Sticking with the Halloween theme, 120 million light years away in the Canis Major constellation, these two galaxies, called NGC 2292 and 2293, three have earned a much cooler name, the Greater Pumpkin Galaxies. Because of their orange color and the fact that they look like a jack-o'-lantern, these galaxies doomed to collide in what we will see as slow motion make for a pretty spectacular image. Not to mention that NASA released the photos on Halloween a few years ago. Though it may be a fun Halloween themed image, there is a scary truth about them. They're on track to collide with each other. And as the two galaxies draw closer, they begin to spin around one another and could eventually form one single spiral galaxy. But when that happens, there there will be some cosmic consequences. Things smashing into each other at ludicrous speeds and exploding out into the darkness with the force of many nuclear bombs. But we don't actually know what will happen until it does. While some may say it reminds them of the Great Pumpkin, I would say that it looks more like a 100,000 light year across Jack Skellington. Number five, the face of Mars. This freaky famous photo was taken by the Viking One orbiter in 1976 and shows us what is very clearly a face embedded in the surface of Mars. A massive one at that, judging by the scale of what's around it. It very clearly has two eyes, a nose, and a mouth. Uncanny, really, especially for being what NASA has called a cosmic coincidence, because with enough time and space, literally anything can happen. When investigated again in 2001 with a better camera, it was not to be seen. Was it just a mound of rocks and dirt that was blown or moved away, or was it something more sin- or was it something more sinister, watching us from the red planet, not knowing that we were finally looking back? Number four, black hole in the Milky Way. Black holes, 
one of the biggest driving forces in the cosmos. These places of pure darkness were once stars that shone bright in the sky, but when they died, instead of going supernova and exploding into a blast of color and energy, they collapsed in on themselves, creating a singularity so dense that it sucks everything around it in, with a force that nothing can escape, not even light. And while this may sound scary, they are incredibly necessary for our understanding of the universe to function. In fact, there are a few in our galaxy, but the biggest is Sagittarius A, the supermassive black hole at the center of the Milky Way. This is the second image ever captured of a black hole, and it's insane that we've developed the technology to be able to find and photograph them. Sag A sits at the center of our galaxy and is the reason why it spins and has its signature spiral shape. But the scary part is that it is not only spinning our galaxy, but consuming it, adding one more way that our galaxy can meet its demise. Not sure I'd rather that or colliding with another galaxy. Either way, none of us are going to be around to see it. Number three, Hand of God. This is what's known as a pulsar wind nebula. And what you're seeing is a cloud of material that was ejected from a dying star, captured by X-ray telescopes functioning at different energy levels. Lower energy detections appearing in red and green, and higher ones in blue. While we can explain what this stellar specter is made of, we can't quite figure out why it takes the shape it does. And NASA is still wondering if the pulsar particles are interacting in a specific way to make it look like a hand. When the new readings were taken, the ones appearing blue, they realized that one part of the hand is actually shrinking at a different speed than the rest, implying that the two areas were physically different, and making us all wonder what the hand is reaching towards. Number two, Ghost Nebula. Known formally as SH2-136, really rolls off the tongue. This reflection nebula has some pretty startling shapes appearing within it. A reflection nebula does exactly what you think. It reflects light from nearby stars and galaxies. The energy from stars nearby is not strong enough to ionize the gas of the nebula, but it is enough to illuminate the dust and make it visible to us. Looking at the picture, it's a no-brainer why it's earned its much cooler name, the Ghost Nebula. You can see little figures waving from the edge of the space cloud. They even appear to have horns. I'm not sure what that's about, but I'm here for it. Give me all the spooky space specters. Again, this is just one of those cosmic coincidences that we can't explain, and that if we existed at any other place in the universe, we may not see. So we're pretty lucky, I guess. But let's hope our luck holds out for our final entry. Number one, roaming black holes. Now, I told you about black holes, those things that suck in and destroy anything that comes near, even light, with no chance to escape. But they are pretty detectable, and we should be able to avoid them since they're such a huge cosmic entity, right? Well, what if I told you that there are many out there that are near impossible detect? because they're moving. That's right. Known as roaming black holes, these death spheres fly through our universe devouring everything in their path. Only detectable by fluctuations in mass and light, they were most likely two black holes that attracted each other, then slingshotted off one another and were flung out into space. But here's the kicker. The Hubble telescope actually detected one closer than anyone would want, in our own Milky Way. While pointed near the center of the galaxy at Sagittarius A, a fluctuation in light and space shows that we may have one of these devouring our galaxy. And we would never see it coming until it was too late. So there you go. One of my, and possibly now one of your fears, roaming black holes. Space is crazy and terrifying. It is absolutely baffling and will never cease to impress me the technology and knowledge we have developed in our time as a species to investigate beyond our own planet. Especially since, at the end of the day, we're all just monkeys with car keys. Number 10, the Venus Wave. Spotted by the Akatsuki spacecraft in 2015, a massive wave was observed traveling across the surface of Venus. Stretching for 10,000 kilometers, the wave continued up until Venus's cloud tops, where it suddenly became stationary. It is uh, good to note that the average traveling speed of clouds in Venus' upper atmosphere roughly caps out at about 100 meters per second. The source of the wave is undetermined, with theories being tossed around that it might have been caused by a rogue gravity wave, which itself would have been caused by the displacement of a fluid from its preferred position. Uh, as Venus is an extremely volatile planet, and no research craft has survived for longer than a couple of minutes on its surface, these claims are difficult to prove, and the secrets of this blue dot remain hidden beneath its swirling clouds. 
Number 9. The Kecksburg File On the night of December 9th, 1965, a giant fireball which caused a sonic boom streaked across the sky before crashing into the woods in Kecksburg, Pennsylvania. Military immediately arrived and sealed off the area, hauling off a massive object the size of a bus to their Air Force base nearby in Ohio. The Pentagon immediately tried to cover it up, saying it was a meteorite, releasing no details about the incident. But in 2003, NASA went on to say that it was not a satellite, but two years later in 2005 they said yeah actually it was a satellite, just don't worry about it. The cover up seemed never ending and it just led more and more people to become interested in finding out the truth of the Kecksburg file. A Freedom of Information Act was then started to get the file looked into again and the judge threw away NASA's attempts to have the lawsuit thrown out. So in 2007 they announced they would be reopening the Kecksburg file, but they claimed that a majority of the files had been destroyed or lost, and they never released what it actually was that crashed that day. Number 8. PSO J318.5-22 Discovered yet again by our friends at the University of Hawaii, PSO J318.5-22 is a rogue planet floating through space without a star for it to orbit. It's estimated to be roughly the size of Jupiter, but as to where it came from, no one has a clue. Theories about some hoping that it may have been kicked away from its home star due to a gravitational anomaly, but who can say? None but the rogue planet, no. Number 7. The Diamond Planet Discovered in 2004, Janssen is an exoplanet close to the star Cancri A. Years later, the planet was determined to be a carbon planet, a theoretical type of planet with more carbon than oxygen. As a result of this, it is theorized, due to the method of which diamonds are created, that within Janssen could lie an absolute abundance of diamonds. However, getting to it would be difficult. See, Janssen's proximity to the sun is so small that average temperatures are estimated to be around uh, 17,000 degrees Celsius. So, good luck getting close enough to snag some stones. Honestly, the scariest thing to me is that someone might actually try this, for reasons that I doubt even the greatest minds could truly comprehend, beyond, I guess, greed. Number 6. The Vampire Star Halloween's over, but the true horror fans know that it lasts all year long. Not just limited to our solar system, the existence of Hammer Horror classic monsters has clearly reached the stars, specifically symbiotic stars. See, when two stars are formed in proximity to one another, their mass will draw in the hydrogen from the other star, which will deplete its life, turning it into a white dwarf. From there, the white dwarf will go supernova, annihilating both in the process. What scientists have difficulty explaining is how such celestial entities exist, and worst of all, how some have survived the supernova. It's hypothesized that Betelgeuse, the star, not the ghost, is what's called a cannibal star. And before we observed it, Betelgeuse must have sucked the life out of another star. So why can we still see Betelgeuse today, despite the fact that the other star would have gone Novo? Wait, did I say it three times? Number 5. The Huge LQG Quasars are extremely supermassive black holes that are surrounded by accretion disks, which then release their generation of a beam as pure radiation. We'll get into that later. Cool! and slightly terrifying, right? Well, the huge LQG is made up of a cluster of 74 quasars. 74. Originally believed to be impossible, this massive cluster of black holes and radiation defies both science and sense just by its existence. The huge LQG has a rough span of 4 billion light years, easily the largest structure in the universe, and by far larger than our own. Number 4. The Boots Void Do you know what's more terrifying than something? Nothing. And the Boots Void is just that. Nothing. A region of space where there is simply nothing. And to be clear, this isn't Barnard 68, the dark nebula that eats light. No, no, no. This is just nothing. Several galaxies do surround it, but none exist within its center. There's nothing within the void. There may never have been, and there maybe never will be. Or maybe there's just something keeping everything else out. Number 3. The Incoming Mega Comet Did you know that 
Every year, 17,000 meteorites fall to Earth. Now, most of these just burn up in the atmosphere, usually long before they're visible. Uh, the ones that can be seen are the ones that are actually dubbed meteors. But what if a meteor couldn't burn up in the atmosphere? Spotted by the Hubble telescope, the comet Bernard Dinelli Bernstein is currently flying right towards us at around 72,000 miles per hour. 60 miles across, the meteor is roughly half the theorized size of the asteroid response responsible for ending the age of the dinosaurs. But nevertheless, this cosmic catastrophe could cause considerable consternation were it to collide with our rock. So, when does it get here? Well, don't bother looking up because it, it isn't going to come within like a billion miles of us. Even so, if it changes course even slightly, we could be looking at a pretty dark future. Number two, gamma ray bursts. There's a distinct beauty to black holes, their swirling light collapsing into a mass so dense as to erase light itself. Their byproducts are gamma ray bursts, these streams of light that fire out of what would be visualized as the top and bottom of the black hole. It sort of looks like a gyroscope, only one that, you know, defies physics and erases matter. Well, as it turns out, even the most beautiful parts of this flower can be its deadliest, as gamma ray bursts are explosions of high intensity radiation that could cook anything in its way in a matter of seconds. So it's a good thing that, you know, stars aren't dying out regularly, and even better that our planet has never been hit by a gamma ray burst before, oh wait, it actually totally was. Well, the effects wouldn't exactly be, you know, Death Star adjacent, if Close enough, the radiation would absolutely be lethal, and close in terms of spatial proximity could be anywhere, honestly. Comforting thought. Number one, the CMB cold spot. The CMB cold spot was discovered by the Wilkinson Microwave Anisotropy Probe, a device primarily constructed to measure cosmic background radiation and test the theory of the Big Bang. The cold spot was added to a structure that is titled, I'm not joking, the Axis of Evil, a name given to any anomaly that deviates from the Copernican principle. Far larger than the boot's void, temperatures within the cold spot are around 0.00007 Kelvin. The average in space, of course, is about 2.7 Kelvin. What caused the creation of the cold spot is unknown, but physicist Laura Mersini Houghton claimed that it could be an imprint from a parallel universe. Number 10. Go Pills. Introducing Go Pills, the pill that keeps you up for 40 hours straight. What could possibly go wrong? When the government tried creating these new pills, the right idea was in mind. Or so we think. Overnight workers, military, maybe you need to cram three days of studying in in one night. You name it. The US Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, or DARPA, was supposed to have your back. What happened? The Air Force has around 100 fatal crashes on record because of fatigued pilots. So US military was actively trying to create a solution for these physically demanding jobs. The closest that we have now to these go pills are something called modafinil, which is a narcotic approved by the Air Force to combat said fatigue, but it's not public yet. Of course, obviously. Do you think these government go pills will ever make it to the public? I mean, I think coffee makes people crazy enough in the mornings. I'm all set personally. I'm on like coffee number four. I'm jazzed up right now. Number nine, the heart attack gun. Sounds like a pretty calm weapon right there. The CIA had this weapon and it was more of a dart gun than anything, but you know, heart attack gun sounds pretty on the nose for this list. It shot a frozen dart filled with a specific toxin that, you guessed it, gave you a heart attack. Pretty James Bond, right? It was frozen so that the dart would ideally melt away after it's done its damage. You know, destroying all the evidence, right? It's like some icicle killer stuff right there. That's some, that's some next level. There we go. Took me 17 <laughs> seconds to remember what an icicle was called. I was like, what are those long drippy frozen things? The icicles. The CIA was really into poisons during the Cold War and apparently darts. Match made in heaven. The public caught wind of all this thanks to Senator Frank Church, and when Congress decided to look into where these tax dollars were going, they found a plethora of illegal methods used by not only the CIA, but also the NSA and the FBI and the IRS. A lot of letters coming in, a lot of, a lot of sketchy letters. Frozen darts, that's insane. That's a confusing way to go out. You'd have no idea what happened. You'd be like, ugh, burr. Ow. Like, it'd be that fast. That's crazy. Number eight, Project Ice Worm. Ooh, speaking of cold, here we go. Back in the 1960s, under the Greenland Ice Sheet, the US Army started to build a mobile nuclear missile launch site, okay? It was codenamed Project Ice Worm. It's a pretty fun name because it's cold and underground. 
We get it, right? Nice. The idea was that they would build the station close enough so that they could hit targets within the Soviet Union, all secretly, right? That was the whole idea. This project was called Project Iceworm, but there was another project called Camp Century that had to be done first. This is the top secret, sketchy stuff. Can't just hit the road with a few shovels, you gotta make sure it's livable first. Camp Century was a network of underground tunnels and places for workers to hang out, like a kitchen, a hall, supply rooms, communication center, all stuff like that. It was a supply camp. You know, whatever you imagine, it was that. There was also a nuclear power plant. That's the most important part to keep everything active, right? This was kept from the Danish government for seven years. A secret nuclear power plant for seven years. Yeah, we don't like those. But in 1966, the project was canceled because of shifting ice. Or at least that's what they say. No, it's definitely shifting ice. The whole place is melted by now. Number seven, leaked voters. Back in December 2015, personal information from 191 million voters was leaked to the public online. It happened very fast. This feels like yesterday. I remember this happening online. I was actually quite worried about it. Researcher Chris Vickery found this data while conducting a security investigation. See, Forbes had described Vickery as, well, dare I say, a good hacker, for lack of a better word. They're called white hat hackers. They find weak spots in security without sabotaging or exploiting them. You know, they're not villains. They're just like, oh, check this file. Gotcha. They're nice. That's key. We need that. That's the difference. 79% of those eligible to vote were the victims in this leak. All their names, addresses, birth date, phone numbers, emails, even photos photos, you name it, things you don't want people knowing, let alone third parties online, it's now out there. We're still unsure who was behind this entire leak, so that's comforting to go to sleep to, knowing. CSO Online and databreaches.net suggest that the information more than likely came from a software provider called Nation Builder. But CEO Jim Gilliam announced that that was not the case and they did not create the database. He said, nope, false. Although he conceded that it is still possible that some of the information that it contains may have come from data that they make available for free to campaigns. So a third party took what they could and really ran with it. It wasn't them, it was just their weak security. Nice, we love that. Just my photo, just in someone's Google Doc. I'm like, awesome. I don't want anything out there. I don't want my Google search history out there. That sounds suspicious. Number six, the Space Cube. In honor of Jordan Peele's new space movie coming out called Nope, we have to include some alien cover-ups in this government list. Not too long ago, this spinning cube-looking drone hopefully drone, was spotted over Missouri, and then only a couple hours later, it was seen again 700 miles away. That's a pretty far distance, that's a fast travel time. What's your secret? 44-year-old Matthew Jandeka was minding his own business, hanging out on the porch, when this caught his attention. It was a sunny day, so the light reflected off the cube and it caught his eye. But then a day later, another guy, 30-year-old Justin Johnson, he saw the same exact thing in the sky. He saw it while he was driving home. The light and the reflection, same thing, caught his eye. At first, I thought maybe it was a balloon, but the movements were odd, he said. Well, it sounds like whatever this thing is, military aircraft, drone, whatever the case, it's pretty fast. Maybe they're filming Top Gun 3, who knows? No spoilers. Number five, Surtsey Island. Some islands are forbidden, like Heard Island. They're home to animals and wildlife that the government refuses to let humans be part of, which is sketchy in its own way. A lot of Jurassic Park vibes over there. But when it comes to Surtsey Island near Iceland, again, always Iceland, hiding secret government projects, well, Surtsey Island is a brand new island. We love it. Literally, this island formed from a volcanic eruption back in 1963, so scientists are using this fresh face of Earth to study what it looks like to not have humans in the picture for a change. Yeah, we have have seed vaults, a forbidden island. These projects make people uneasy. Hence why the government tries to keep them low key. That is until I come out and then loudly announce it and then tell you to hit that like button. Awesome. Number four, WikiLeaks Warlog. Companies have to live somewhere, right? We're a film studio in Toronto, we're a place we're not just a bunker, right? We're like an establishment, there's windows, we have a fridge, lots of coffee, we're okay. But where do places like WikiLeaks work? It's probably a sketchy establishment. It's probably nothing like Google, you know what I'm saying? Not a lot of beanbag chairs going on at WikiLeaks. Probably just one chair that everyone shares. Just one guy, it's literally just one guy. Today, it's a facility owned by Swedish internet provider Banhof. This is where they keep servers for WikiLeaks. Julian Assange was the front runner for this whole operation, so literally, like I said, it was one guy. His hard drive is stored in in this bunker behind a two foot steel door accompanied by numerous backup generators. So you're not getting in, pal. In October 2010, WikiLeaks actually published Army field reports from 2004. It's now one of the biggest leaks in US history. This report confirmed that there were over 66,000 civilian deaths in the Iraqi war logs out of the 109,000 in total. This leak also suggested that some American troops were classifying civilians as enemies in their statistics. Yeah, which is not great. That's, that's a borderline 
That's a big leak. These numbers were from 2004 to 2009 alone. Yeah, it's hard stuff. Number three, military weapons. Getting into the alien stuff, here we go. Psycho-electronic weapons. Yeah, apparently we're in a DC comic now. We have ice darts, ice rays, what's going on here? The first time Curtis Waltman heard of these military psycho-electronic weapons was when he received documents via Yahoo. Of all the places to get documents, you're like, oh. This is 10 years old. Originally, he had filed the Freedom of Information Act request to Washington State Fusion Center. He was trying to find out more on the clashes between Antifa and the far right. But instead, he got a response and it was all about experimental weapons. He's like, this is not what I asked for. What is this? Open. The guy gets a zip file back in return and it's called EM Effects on Human Body. Uh, how do you not open that, right? And that's exactly what he did. He opened this file because, of course, and in it he saw diagrams on these weapons and the effects that they have on people. Muscle quaking, body pain, just shivering, just your body shuts down, it's horrible. One of the effects allowed users to control their dreams, so it's not all bad, it's just kind of not right, unethical. This was clearly set by mistake. Nobody should ever know about any of these weapons, these super dream weapons. I don't even know what's going on there. The only emails I get are from student loans. Those ones are not a mistake. Those ones I, I will keep deleting. Number two, inner armor. Not to be confused with your inner ninja. It's also pretty mighty. We've all wanted to be a superhero at some point. Okay, I'm always late. I would love super speed any day. That'd be great. Well, DARPA's Inner Armor Project almost made a dream come true. It was the Pentagon's way of creating super soldiers. Yeah, like Iron Man. They were literally working on this. Scientists use animals as a reference for these new abilities, literally like from a Marvel movie. They're studying the DNA of the stellar sea lion because it can reduce blood flow away from organs if need be in order to reduce oxygen demand. So now we're studying that to try and make I don't know, people like Atlanteans? Where are we going here? That would be sweet, just Aquaman with a tactical vest and a spear. Okay, that's, sure. Dr. Michael Callahan, who was in charge of running the operation, he says the goal was to make soldiers kill-proof against disease, chemical weapons, radioactive weapons, harsh weather conditions, you name it, all that good stuff. Pretty much invincible. Now, this was back in 2007, and of course, in 2014, Barack Obama announced that the United States was still building Iron Man, so maybe they're close. Maybe they haven't done it yet, who knows. Honestly, I'm seeing videos every day of like these guys on hoverboards whipping down New York. We're so close to the Green Goblin in real life. We're f***ed. Or like the water pier guy, he like uses the water to float. That's like two villains. It's two villains right there in real life. And finally, number one, MK Ultra. We have to finish with a mind control project. It's the only way, of course. MK Ultra was a secret CIA project that lasted from 1953 to 1973. It's a long time. They ran hundreds of experiments to US citizens. They gave them illicit substances and other narcotics, just horrible stuff, all in attempts to crack mind control. Or as they call it, information gathering. Mind control, it's definitely mind control. In the 50s and 60s, around the Cold War, the United States believed that the Soviets, Chinese, and or North Korean agents were all using mind control in the war. I mean, how else could you explain brainwashed prisoners of war in Korea, right? Nothing to do with what they're doing to them. Sure. The program had subjects take L D, hallucinogens, paralytics, electric shock therapy, horrible stuff, just being put through the absolute worst, all in places like universities or hospitals or even prisons, right? You have no idea this stuff's happening. The happenings of these projects weren't fully known to the public until years after it ended. But the agency destroyed most MK documents back in 1973 when the whistle was blown. So we think we know, but in reality, we only know little to what happened during MK Ultra. Starting off at number 10 now, we have the smiley face. In February 2015, NASA published this extraordinary picture showing a cluster of galaxies that undoubtedly looks like a face. It almost looks too good to be true, like someone photoshopped it, but it is 100% legitimate. The picture was taken by NASA's Deep Space Hubble Telescope. They said in a statement, galaxy clusters are the most massive structures in the universe and exert such a powerful gravitational pull that they wrap the space-time around them and act as cosmic lenses which can magnify, distort, and bend the light behind them. This phenomenon, crucial to many of Hubble's discoveries, discoveries can be explained by Einstein's theory of general relativity. So yeah, basically that distortion and magnification is what's causing the outline of the face and the mouth. In scientific terms, this is called an Einstein ring. Those eyes aren't actually stars either. They are entire galaxies with over 100 billion stars in them. Traveling across just one of them at the speed of light would take hundreds of thousands of years.
is. I could go on with that, but we've only just started. Don't want to blow your minds just yet. Moving on to number nine now, we have the man on Mars. 1976, the Viking 1 orbiter passed over the surface of Mars and sent back pictures to Earth. Scientific community were fascinated by all of them, but one picture in particular caught people's attention. This one. Everyone who saw it saw the face, but what exactly was it? Viking 1 took this picture on its 35th orbit of Mars at an altitude of 1,162 miles. The face rises up from the surface of Mars to 2,600 feet, over twice the height of the Empire State Building. It's also 1.6 miles wide and 1.2 miles long. Conspiracy theorists believe that the face is a structure made by an ancient civilization who lived on Mars long before it became uninhabitable to complex life. NASA obviously rejects this and says that the face is nothing more than a trick of the light and some shadows. The conspiracy theorists have disagreed though and still maintain there is a lot more to this face on Mars than meets the eye. Moving on to number 8 now, we have the Sumerian. In 2015, this picture started doing the rounds online. Now at first, it might not look like much, but UFO hunters believe it's the head of a fallen statue. Specifically, that it looks like an ancient Sumerian statue that you'd expect to find in ancient Mesopotamia, right here on Earth. They point to the two eyes, the nose, the mouth, and the typical cone-shaped beard of Sumerian statues. Now some people have taken this to the absolute extreme and believe that ancient beings may have colonized both Mars and Earth. That's why there's a similarity in the beards. It's quite a far-fetched theory, I won't lie, and uh, yeah, NASA denies it, of course. Moving on to number 7 now, we have the smiley face. We are returning to Mars again for this one. This is the smiley face that was spotted by the Viking 1 orbiter, the same mission that took the picture of the other face on Mars that we talked about earlier. Smiley face is a little bit less controversial though. Nobody, I think, is claiming that it's the product of some ancient civilization, but it is pretty interesting to look at. From directly above, the smiley face looks a lot like the famous yellow happy face sticker. I'm sure you know the one I mean. In reality though, the face is made up of a cluster of mountains inside the Galley crater, with the rim of the crater forming the outline of the face. Moving on to number 6 now, we have the crowned face. This is a famous face that's also referred to as the king's face. You're about to see why. The 11 mile wide long feature was spotted in the Libya Monte region of Mars. It's not just a face that sticks out with this picture, it's that crown too. Some people see the face as that of a woman looking to the left, while others see a few different layered faces. Interestingly, the feature that makes this face aren't actually as heavily shadowed as others we've talked about on this list so far, so it can't just be as easily dismissed as just a trick of the light. Moving on to number 5 now, we have the Space Invader. In 2013, the Hubble telescope snapped this spiral galaxy that looks a lot like the face of a Space Invader. It's quite a strange sight to see. This galaxy is over 2 billion light years away. That means the light we see from it took 2 billion years to get here, and to us, it looks like the creature from a classic 1970s video game. I wonder if there is intelligent life somewhere in that galaxy. It's strange to think that they will probably never meet us, and uh, all we ever know about their galaxy is that it looks like a space invader. What a strange universe we live in. Moving on to number 4 now, we have the Meridiani face. This is one of the lesser known faces seen on the surface of Mars. It can be found on the Meridiani planum, near the planet's equator, and some people believe it's of course evidence evidence of intelligent creation. The two eyes looked closed, or perhaps they're squinting. There's a large nose and two sharp looking cheekbones as well. I don't know about everyone else, but to me, it kind of looks like the face is submerged underwater, or as if it's underneath like a frozen lake of ice. Kind of creepy. I just hope it doesn't open its eyes. That would be very freaky indeed. Moving on to number three now, we have Jovi. Now that is the nickname given to this picture that shows a pretty disturbing face across the surface of Jupiter. The stormy surface of Jupiter is all always shifting and changing throughout time, but I imagine none of you have ever seen it quite like this. This image was processed by amateur scientist Jason Major. Now he jokingly titled it Jovi McJupiter Face. He produced the image by rotating it 180 degrees and orienting it from one side to the south side, if that makes sense. By doing that, the two huge oval storms become the eyes and this creepy face of Jupiter is revealed. Moving on to number two now, we have the woman on Mars. In 2007, NASA's Spirit Rover delivered this image showing what looks like like a person strolling through the Martian sands. Some have said that specifically, it looks like a woman. NASA admitted that although it looks like a person, it's not actually a person at all. This masked strolling figure is actually a craggy rock formation. Of course, conspiracy theorists disagree with this. They admit that the figure is probably made out of rock, but they say it's the statue of a female figure made by aliens. The Planetary Society was quick to call the object an optical illusion and an example of pareidolia, the tendency for our minds to assign familiar 
familiar patterns to random shapes or sounds. I think that might just pretty much sum up this whole video. And finally, number one now, we have the goblin. That's the name that I'm giving this face that was spotted inside a cave on Mars by NASA's Curiosity rover. This picture was taken in 2016 and quickly spread across the internet. UFO hunters started discussing the possibility of it being an alien creature. Scott Waring, editor of UFO Sightings Daily, believes that this is an important find. He spends hours every day going through the many images that NASA publishes online. Mr. Waring told his followers that if this really was a creature in the cave, then it would be about three inches in height by his calculation. Hmm, a three inch Martian. Now, that's possible, but as with many of the others on our list, this creepy face may just be a rock. I don't know.